So I've had a bunch of requests on this gas pedal and how I hooked it up to the generator controls on this. So first we're going to start with the generator controls that I modified and then we'll talk about the redneck gas pedal down here. So this right here is your standard Mako 48 inch throttle cable. I'll include a link for this in the description. The thing I like about these is if we can put it in there, you'll see there's a metal tip that goes all the way through. So you just drill it big enough that the metal tip goes in. And then if you want to, you can put some sort of locking nut or a screw or something there in order to hold it in place. But if you do it correctly, there is no reason that should ever come out of there. And so you really don't have to do anything but just drill a hole for it to pour it through. The other reason why I like these Mako cables is because they have this type of end. As you can see, it's a big, giant, easy to work with end with a fully adjustable threaded connection here for being able to use. So... What we did was normally there's a lever that sticks up right here and normally this is in control of killing the motor. What I wanted to do was I wanted to be able to maintain the pivot and the control here in order to be able to shift this plate. Because what happens is when you thump this, this rotates all the way around this direction and then it comes down and it kills the motor. So by rotating this up as the cable stretches, you'll be able to adjust where the idle comes down to rather than having it end up killing the motor every time you let off the gas pedal. Now that is just down through the end of this with a regular standard motorcycle lock nut on the end of it. I can't remember what these are called, but I'll make sure to post a link in the description below for the ones I use. I like these versus the brass ones. I find that the brass ones tend to give out over time, whereas these nickel ones seem to last a lot longer. Um, they're motorcycle grade kits instead of just the universals. This right here adjusts how high your throttle will go. And this right here is spring-loaded internally, so it'll bounce the upper part of the throttle just a little bit, like that. So if you put this further this direction, you lower the upper R RPM. If you pull it this direction, then it, you raise it. Now, what happens with these is that they hit a certain point where the pump actually floats and basically there's a spring on the bottom and there's a spring in here and it goes back and forth with the piston up and down and when you hit a certain point that this spring cannot return it back down fast enough you're floating your pump so it acts as its own limiter in a sense so hopefully we'll figure out a spring upgrade for this and we'll be able to crank our rpms just a little bit higher later on so there we go. That's how this setup works. There's nothing really overly critical. I just bent this down so it was at a 90 degree angle because normally this is up and drilled a hole through and put that in and did the wire tie. Now on the other end, we got a little bit more creative over here. So what we have is an angle bracket We've got a bolt welded to it with a nut that we screwed in and then welded on the inside of so it can't come back off. This is just a standard door hinge that you buy at Tractor Supply or just about any hardware store. I'll post a picture of what they look like at the hardware store. I think it was like six bucks. These ATV Mako cables, they're like $14.95. I'll include a link for those also. So that goes there. This plate here is actually the front deck holding plate that came off of this machine. So this normally would have been bent around a little further and I cut that off. And that is the plate there that I made my pedal out of. So yet again, a piece of angle bracket, a bolt, a nut welded, a 
standard barn hinge. And then we have this piece that comes up. And then right here, this is just a washer that I cut the top out of so that I could bind this on. And then that gives me my adjustment here to be able to lay this out just a little bit further. And this little nub piece here that the cotter pin goes through, if I come around, as you can see, that is welded on. And what this is, is your deck height adjustment. There's a little bar piece that goes down through the floor, one here and one over there. That is just the top of that piece, cut off and then welded so that I can be able to put the end of the Mako cable onto it. So if we pump that, then we move that. It's that simple, nothing overly complicated or special, it works. So there we go, that's the video you guys have been requesting as of late, hopefully it helps a lot of you.